Halo telling me that him coming here it took him a couple years to actually start playing how he knew he could play. And with Malachi and all all the young players we have, maybe utilizing some of these players like a little bit more. I think we didn't do so well. That hurt us some in developing our young players. I also play point. It's the IQ. It's it's the it's the film study. It's the IQ. It's the processing speed. It's all that stuff. And I'm sorry, I haven't seen that in four years. But I have not seen that for one second from Malachi Flynn. Yes, none of us is spotless, least of all me, folks. But as my nanny in the picture frame down here pointed out in my last video, when she chose from the book of Malachi 3:10, when we put our love into things, it spreads. So when these guys put their love into things, and when this guy does, and when this guy does, this and when it's this guy does, Carter. Carter with the chip. and when we all do, it can grow into something magnificent. So on days like today, when we're making cuts that involve players that are more than worthy of being on this roster, and it just boils down to 16 amazing young men, and only 15 spots. The storehouses are full of blessing, so much so that we cannot even store it. Promise you, Jeff got everything the franchise promised him from being here. We got lots from Jeff, and Jeff is gonna find opportunities because of the opportunities that he was given here. So today, as I do my third installment of the Book of Malachi, where I set out to challenge Robert's opinion that Malachi has never shown us anything. I want to first acknowledge some people getting together and doing something to try and make a difference. You may have noticed these free Jeff Downton things all over Raptors content the last few days. Serious applause to anyone that was involved in this. It's a great thing that you all came together and tried to change something. That's something we need more of in the world. I will say that this idea that Downton was being oppressed by an evil Raptors regime led by Masai Ujiri is a little bit crazy, especially when Jeff signed documents when we gave him a chance after he was cut from the Magic, then the Warriors, and the Bucks, and we gave him a few good years here, and he's certainly a little heavier in the pocket as a result of being here, and I think he would tell you that he's a better basketball player. So applause for getting together. We should be doing this more often as a human race, not just as basketball fans. But yeah, guys, like, drop the rhetoric. That's as bad as a Trump campaign. I don't remember! I want to be nasty. Do you mind? Do you mind? But on a day like today, I love Malachi. I love Jeff. I just, I feel so conflicted. I don't know what to do. I wish Mr. T was here to give us a message. Mr. T! If your brother or sister does something special, you should be happy for them. Proud of them. Just like I would be for you. Get the point? If you do, you'll be right on target. Take it from me. Mr. T. All right, thanks, Mr. T. Malachi, I'm happy for you. I'm proud for you. Congratulations. Now let's get into some quick roster moves that took place, and then we'll get to actually taking a look at what makes Malachi a really good investment for us as fans and as a franchise. Okay, so before game time last night, there were some key roster moves. Obviously, Downton leaves the club this morning, so he's off to greener pastures, okay? And we'll miss him. We also had Justice Winslow enter camp. In order for that to happen, we had 20 men on the maximum 20-man roster for training camp. We converted the contracts of Mogi and McCour Maker to E10s. Officially, they'll be at the 905. Justice Winslow is not on an E10, okay? Justice Winslow is on what's called an E9, which gives him injury insurance in case he gets injured doing what he's doing this week. You're gonna hear that he might be at the 905. I don't think that's the case. This is like Josh Jackson last year. He's here to challenge for one of those 15 spots. All of our guys that we just thought were safe after Jeff left, at least we can only lose Jeff, it can't get any worse. Justice Winslow is here to potentially improve our team if we think it can be improved to be more competitive this year. So someone might get pushed off the roster still. That leaves our E10s, which can be converted to two-way contracts. A list of Kevin Abenor from Texas Tech, big 6'8 guard, double-double guy. He's there to emulate a lot of our guys on our club. Same with Mogi and same with McCour Maker. Then we've got our guards. So we are scratching the back of our Poo Jeter at the 905. That's Daryl Morcel. He's the elder statesman. Daryl getting his back scratched, getting a paycheck for doing that for us. He's a great guy. And then we've got, obviously, 
a lot of different guys for Eric Corey and the Brain Trust to play around with, emulating the Raptors big club. You can tell that they're emphasizing looking at that classic relationship between big man and small man, and you can't get any more extreme than having, you know, Christian Coloco and McCour Maker on the club practicing with a guy like Marquise Noel. It's precisely that idea that I want you having in your brain. David versus Goliath, little versus big, that classic antithesis, one another's kryptonite that I want to segue into Malachi Flynn again. So here we go. Here's the knock on Malachi, according to Robert Misovich and others. Let's take a look. I would probably start Jeff. I also play point. It's the IQ. It's, it's, the, it's the film study. It's the IQ. It's the processing speed. It's all that stuff. And I'm sorry, I haven't seen that in four years. Five, I have not seen that for one second from Malachi Flynn. Malachi does not do it. When he's making a pass, it's almost always the wrong pass. I promise you, you break down the game, game film, it's not the right pass. It might lead to an assist but it's not the right pass. When we're talking about Malachi Flynn and Javon Freeman Liberty and Jalen McDaniels. Yeah. Like if they mm -hmm. popped out of the league tomorrow, no one fucking cares. It's the mystery on my show, the best show, Mr. T. Mr. T. Vision 6-9, or as I've called it on my channel for a while now, the Long Arm Monsters, has been the talk of the Toronto sports media ever since we drafted Scotty, for some of us before. This idea, I think, became like confused because people thought that it meant that we were going holistically. And this was the knock on keeping Malachi over Jeff. And it's sensible when you think about it. You'd think like, if you just want all big, long guys, then why would you want Malachi over Jeff, right? Jeff has the frame that you would think. The answer is again, that classic, classic dichotomy between big and small being one another's antithesis. It's never been about just having long arm monster guys. Remember last year when Nick Nurse said this? <laughs> because we had won a championship with a box plus Juan. The Wands in this equation are the Freddies and the Gary Trent Juniors, the Malachis. And Nick Nurse yesterday in the press conferences confirmed Fred's role in the defense. I mean, I think that his biggest strength for us that isn't that um, maybe noticeable or talked about is he guards the other team's pick and roll, right? Which is going on constantly, like every night, you know, you know the guys that are coming in here that are playing pick and roll 70 times a game. Well, he's the guy that's guarding and defeating a lot of that. So that's, that's the thing we've got to make sure when we do veer off and give him all this rest right that we can have a scheme in place or some people in place to defend has there ever been a better time to investigate this relationship folks go ahead and be upset that they chose malachi over down but not for length reasons not for height reasons this is a major point in nba evolution where if our franchise is not toying around with these ideas then you fire masai you know, getting guys to understand the right spot they need to be in as the Thunder will control the tip. Advantage Chet, thanks to Lugan's door. Anyway, the point is, when we look at tape of Malachi, we need to see how he's doing fighting through screens. Oh, he's not going to be able to do the Eagles the same way as everyone else. So how is he positioning himself wisely with his IQ on the court to be valuable? He's shorter, so he can't protect the rim at the rim. So is he moving his feet and predicting the play and protecting the rim from the floor? Not only that, is he getting bumped around completely? What's he doing about that? We should be proud to be watching a franchise that instead of treating every player as, hey, we want next man up, one through 15, all the same. That's not what, they're, what, they're, what Bobby was saying when he said that. I don't think you can have too many, you know, these big two-way wings. Let's have all five guys look like him and OG and Pascal and all that. He was absolutely saying, why wouldn't we want to be able to roll out lineups with five of these guys? But he wasn't saying we don't have any little guys or we don't have any massive guys. We just didn't have any massive guys at the time. Three cheers for Happy Yak and Coloco. Players on our team shouldn't be getting minutes based on their salary or how veteran they are. Players should be getting minutes because we're able to do things to the other team using our team. Not like my best five versus your best five, but my specialized tools versus your specialized tools. 
have done exactly what I don't like to do with players. I don't like to call them kids and stuff like that. They're young men and I've reduced him to a tool. But for the sake of metaphor, what does this tool need to do to be successful? And I've made us a list, the Malachi checklist here. And the first one is, can he shoot? This is gonna be super easy to watch when we watch our film. The second one is, can he fulfill his role on offense? And I talked about this one in the last video. As far as I'm concerned, I think his role on offense is to be like uh, the numbers of a championship Celtics Rajon Rondo. So that means being a responsible facilitator and decent shooting percentage. So those stats are usage rate, okay? So we want it in the high teens, I think, from what I've studied. Uh, it could be low 20s would be fantastic. But this is a measure of how many times the play ends with the ball in your hands. So we want his turnovers to be low, potentially free throws to be high, and his shooting percentage to be decent because it will come down if he misses shots. So this is also a measure of, is he making good decisions when he shoots? Something we watch for when we watch the tape, we're gonna judge his decision making at half speed half the time, so it's not even fucking fair. These guys are incredible. Number three I've already alluded to, does he compensate for his lack of length with foot speed and positioning on defense? That includes passing lanes, so he doesn't have the wingspan or the height. So that means, is he moving his feet to protect the rim? outside of the restricted area. So this includes, is he predicting the play? Can he get to his feet to a place and maybe take a charge or strip a ball? Okay, is he looking to do those things? We're gonna watch for that. Number four, we already talked about, can he adapt to the physicality? The entire league is going big. If you think that the Raptors are the only team with a Vision 6-9, you're crazy. There's long arm marchers everywhere, dude. That game with the uh, the Thunder and San Antonio, oh my gosh, go watch it. It is like awesome, dude. It is crazy good. So is he adapting to the physicality? And one of the measures of that that we're gonna watch for with the film is his screen navigation. Okay, now I've got my fifth one and I'm gonna run with that. But if you think there should be more that we should be watching for, add them to the list in the comments. But my fifth one might surprise you. And it's something we can watch for on tape and in interviews. And it's, is he happy? In my experience in life, whether it's me or someone I'm coaching or mentoring like my kids or young chefs in my kitchens, this one fucking matters, okay? So we're gonna be watching for this all season, all right? I think this is the list for his role. Choosing the clips for Robert's challenge. It may surprise some of you to hear, but these are not reaction videos to Robert's comments. They came after I started making the videos. I knew this is gonna come down to Downton or Malachi in people's eyes because it wasn't mine this year. I counted the roster spots. I knew what was coming. And when I take long breaks from making videos, I wanna make sure something is relevant when I come back and start making them again. I knew this was gonna be a good issue whether Malachi stayed or not. So Robert just kind of walked into this when he made the comments that he did after Malachi's bad game. I had no intention of having Robert in this video. But now that we're here, how do we decide what clips to watch for Robert's challenge? How do we make it hard? And the answer is we're gonna use clips from his worst game. He had three good games and then a really bad game. And after the bad game is when Robert's comments came from. So I think we should use that. Okay, we'll see him at his worst. But before I show you those, I wanna show you four clips from the Sacramento game, the first game of the preseason, where he didn't play that well, but a series of things happened throughout the game where it made me go, huh, huh, huh? Because we've always been just craving for Malachi to have some consistency, okay? And some, some like drive into the paint and initiate the contact. That's a really difficult thing to do in a league that's getting really big. Okay, but we need to see him do it. And in the Sacramento game, I saw that, okay? And it was progressive. So here, I'll show you those clips really quick. Okay, the first one's just a broken play, like nothing. But I was watching him and keeping my eye on him. And I mean, I noticed because he went to the floor and I was like, okay, that's good. Okay, this is the one that really got my eye. Third quarter, he takes the ball off the rim. Watch how he assesses after half court if the paint is empty. Veznikov crosses the paint. Look at it again. He goes right away. I love this. He has to go reverse. But look at this. He's looking for calls. And I was like, what? Amazing. If you've been rooting for Malachi all these years, you know this is exactly what we want to see him doing. And the fact that he's doing it is big time. 
Okay, same quarter, third play. Look at the gravity he draws. Malachi. <laughs> operating. Okay, he successfully penetrated the paint again, and he's drawn three defenders. But because of the length of newly acquired Kessler Edwards, he can't safely put the ball to Jalen McDaniels in the corner. So he needs an outlet. And if you look right here, who needs to be cutting? The answer is Boucher. The cut comes, but a little too late and Malachi loses the ball. For me, I saw this as encouraging. He just drew three defenders, got a paint touch, didn't panic the ball to McDaniels or Gary in the corner, and he just needed some more chemistry with his teammates. Given that chemistry and time, I think you're gonna see completions to the cutting Boucher who is in rhythm with him. I also think given tape sessions you're and speaking to McDaniels, he's gonna find out that he would relocate for him. He couldn't see it because it's in the back of his head. Now he'll know to even maybe have an outlet there for an open shooter. Although I'll say Kessler Edwards got there pretty quick. He closed out, that'll come. Okay, the last one is kind of the same thing, but it's a late clock play under pressure and he kind of shits the bed. It's like a wah, wah. Six seconds, five seconds left here in the third. Wah, wah. Malachi, a little bit too much and loses it out of bounds. So that all made me super hopeful, especially the idea of driving the paint and maybe seeking a little contact. And then post game, he sealed the deal. And not only did we all hear this, but you could see it. Do anything different in terms of like training or preparation? Uh, got in the weight room a little bit more. Pretty obvious you got in the weight room. What was the focus there and what was the routine? How did that, why did you think it could help? Uh, shit, going against these dudes and practice every day for one, I think we got a pretty strong team like from top to bottom. Um, but also in games, just feeling like that little extra couple pounds might help me. Um, so that was kind of a focus during off season. How much did you put on? Um, probably like five to seven pounds of, of good weight. I believe in muscle Malachi. I believe in muscle Malachi too. Guys, if you enjoyed those clips and how I broke them down, make sure you like and subscribe because chapter four is the last book of Malachi where we take a look at his worst game using the criteria from our Malachi list. Remember, it's all about the Larrys. Thanks for your support. Cheers. Here's how to order. No, I don't hate Balboa. Like and subscribe. Fool. This is Chef's Kiss Approved. Mwah!